Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the podcast. Hope you guys are fantastic. I hope you're well. Sending love to yourself and I hope you're having a fantastic day and fantastic week so far. If you can do me a massive favor, guys, if you can like the button, like the video, it just shares it with more people, helps me reach more people, helps me impact more people. That would be incredible. Guys, what we are going to talk about today, it's a, it's, it's a topic that sometimes I do struggle to articulate because it's quite a, I guess, a philosophy. It's quite a, um, I know, untangible way of thinking. So it's from the book, Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life from Dr. Wayne Dyer. Now, I'm not sure if anyone's listened to him or understand him or read him or watched his stuff. His stuff is phenomenal. I'm a big fan of Dr. Wayne Dyer. He has passed away and he's got a book called Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life. And it really dives into Taoism and just the, it, he pretty much transcribes this text called the Tao Te Ching, which is a 2,500 year old um, literature where it pretty much shares lessons of, I guess, how to view world when it comes to leadership, when it comes to accumulation, when it comes to goals, when it comes to being a good human being, which is something that I really got a lot of value from. And one of the biggest lessons that really stood out to me in that book is really the mindset around accumulation and I think it's it's a it's a trait or a habit or a mindset that gets really instilled into us in the world that we live in and the society that we live in that we have to keep accumulating things whether it's money or status or power or materialistic possessions it's like it it becomes a measurement for who you are and your worth as a person and I, I look at that from a sense of ego. Now, when I teach ego, for anyone that hasn't watched my content on ego, your ego is a it's an identity of that you've created of who you need to be to be loved and to be special and to be enough. And it's all a facade. It's all bullshit. I use the Statue of David example all the time when I talk about this. Michelangelo that created or sculpted the Statue of David, people asked him, how did you make such a beautiful piece of art? And he said, it was really easy. David was always there in the statue. I just had to remove everything that wasn't him. And that's the analogy that I use a lot when it does come to ego because think of your authentic self when you were a child. When you felt safe to express yourself as a child, as a uh, young boy, young girl, and you felt safe to express yourself authentically, you didn't struggle with confidence. You didn't struggle with judgment. You didn't struggle with self-worth. You didn't struggle with self-esteem. You didn't struggle with anything because you were expressing and being who you authentically were. But then as you grow up and you learn from mum, dad, teachers, girlfriends, boyfriends, uh, social media, the news, <laughs> just anyone really, you learn all these unofficial rules of who you need to be to be enough. You need to have a certain amount of money in your bank account. You need to have a certain body. You need to look a certain way. You need to have a certain car. You need to wear certain clothes for you to be accepted and to be loved in the world that we live in. And it really builds and instills this attitude or mindset around accumulation. And he uses this example that really hits home for me. If I had a bucket of water right here, if you're watching the video with me or if you're just listening, just picture a bucket of water and if or a bowl of water. If I was to put my hands in the water... And if I was to squeeze my hands as hard as I can to try my hardest to get the water, I want the water so badly that I squeeze it so hard to grab it, what happens to the water? It goes away. And the harder that you squeeze and the harder you try to grab the water, the more it avoids you. And he pretty much ties it back to that psychology of neediness around your achievements. Now, I'm not going to the extreme because I believe there's balance in everything and I don't believe, okay, well, then don't have any goals, don't try to achieve anything. But I do look at what's your fuel behind the goals that you're achieving or the, the goals that you're aiming for. I'm huge on goal setting. I'm running a free workshop in about a week and a half uh, about achieving goals. So I'm huge on goal setting. But something that just really hit with me is that the more that you chase, the, me the less you achieve. The more that you try to get it, the more it avoids you. So it's like picture when you're in school or when you're growing up and you, you, you had that person that was very needy. They had a lot of needy energy around it. They always had to be liked. They always had to be talked to. They always needed attention. They always needed energy. Is that energy attracting or repelling? It's repelling. So the more that you're needy of your goals, the money, the house, the cars, 
the status, the title, whatever it may be. The more needy you are of it, the more it's going to avoid you. So the, a little mental exercise that he shares in the book that I really got a lot of value out of is picture the thing you value the most, whether it's a handbag or a car or maybe it's a, a status or an achievement or a, a goal of yours that you want to achieve. Picture that goal and picture the thing you value the most. Then mentally give it away. As in mentally see yourself never actually getting it and sitting with that and being okay with that. The most powerful place to be in life is to be totally okay whether it happens or not. That is such a beautiful, peaceful, neutral place to come from. But you want to balance that. Okay, should I just never have any goals and never chase anything? Absolutely not. I agree with the complete opposite. But it's been in a place where you're okay whether you do or not. It's not been attached to the goal. It's not been, I need to achieve this accumulation goal of money, status, fucking cars, houses, because I feel so shit about myself and it's going to make me feel better. No, 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 no. It's, I'm going to do this because I'm inspired to do this. And if it doesn't happen, it, I'm not attached to it anyways. And being in that place, in that space, in that mind frame, in that mindset is so fucking powerful. Because then you do things out of inspiration, not desperation. And if you can just really have that really distinct and subtle shift between I, need, I, I want to achieve this goal because I need it because it's going to make me feel good about myself because it becomes a mirage and you have a mirage and this is actually quite a scary place to be in when it comes to business and life as a whole is people think they'll be happy once they achieve something, once they get this, once they make the million dollars, once they have the business, once they have the house, once they have the car and then they get there and then they realize, fuck, I've still got that emptiness that's inside of me. Well, I must have got the number wrong. It's not 1 million, it's 10 million. I need $10 million. Let's go do that. Let's go do that. Let's, and then you go chase it and you get it. Like, okay, it's still the void still there. It's 100 million. And that you always move the goalpost. So again, don't take the, the mindset of not having goals. Have goals, chase goals. That's awesome. Have goals to fulfill, have goals that inspire you, have things to work towards, but just look at what's your fuel to get there. Are you doing it because you're fucking inspired by that goal and you would be grateful to pursue that goal and put the work in necessary to get there? Or are you doing it because you feel so shit about yourself and you're doing this because you think it's going to make you happy because it fucking won't? Look at Robin Williams. He's the probably most well-known example of this. He had millions of dollars. He achieved more accolades than fucking majority of actors ever will in his space. He had a beautiful family. He achieved X amount of goals, but he made everyone happy but whom? Himself. I didn't know him personally. I don't, I don't, I can't say that I did, but I've heard stories of people that do and work closely with him. But being clear on what is meaningful to you, this is values. I talk about this a lot live to your values, live to your purpose, create your mission, create your vision, all that good stuff. But also just don't be attached to the goals. Don't be attached to the accumulation. It's all ego. You've heard, and the ego normally triggers people because that's your ego coming out. But it's all, if, you're, if your self-worth is dependent on how much fucking money you have in your bank account, you will be so... That, there's a quote that I heard. It's like, don't be so broke. All you have is money. Get clear on what you love. Get clear on what's inspiring to you and definitely set goals, reverse engineer it, take action, get mentors, get coaches, whatever it may be. Do all that good stuff, but don't be attached to it. And that right there is the subtle shift, which I'd like you guys to get away from this. So... Guys, just a mental image if you haven't, if you didn't do it already, is literally write down or visualize what is it that you really crave the most, you really want the most. The family, the parents, the holidays, the experiences, the house, the car, the status, the achievement, and mentally throw it away. He actually does it, he recommends in the book, if you've actually physically got a possession that you crave so much, physically give it away. In the book, he sold... 
um, in well in his life, he sold all his belongings, all his books, all his achievements, all everything he had. He sold it all, so he wasn't attached to it. So if you're in that position, find your most prized possession, give it away. And some people think I'm fucking crazy from what I just said. You don't have to physically do it, but mentally do it. Don't be attached to it because the more, the harder you squeeze that water, the more it avoids you. Guys, much love. I hope you got value from this. If you're interested in working with me or going further with your learning with me, I have a free trial of my exclusive mastermind below. It's absolutely free. You can cancel anytime and uh, I'd love to serve you guys further. Much love. Thank you for being on this podcast. Send this and share this with a friend. Share it on your story and on Instagram. Tag me. I'd love to see who gets value out of it. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. I'm grateful for you guys and have a great afternoon. See ya.